Hey guys, Greg here, and let's solve Lee Code 42, Trapping Rainwater. Now this is honestly an extremely hard question, and it's a shame that companies honestly ask this question. For some reason, Amazon and Goldman Sachs like actually love this. Uh, it's a stupid question and insanely hard, but let's do it anyway. So we're given n non-negative integers representing an elevation map where the width of each bar is one. We need to compute how much water it can trap after raining. So basically we are given the array of the black squares. So it's zero, so that's nothing here. We have one, which is one square and so on. And we need to calculate the total number of blue squares that get trapped. That is one, two, three, four, five, six. We would return six. Now there's honestly just a simple trick to this problem, which is gonna make it really easy. It's just really hard until you know the trick. So let's look at this square here. Well, let's look at the max wall that's to the left of it. The max wall is this one here. Let's look at the max wall to the right of it. Well, that is this three here. So the max to its left is one and the max to its right is three. Let's take the minimum of these two values. So the minimum of one and three, that is equal to of course one. And here you go. Well, it trapped one rainwater. That's pretty much it. Let's do that again with this square. Why did it trap two? Well, let's look at the max wall that's to its left. That is over here at two. Let's look at the max wall that's to its right. It is over here at three. We take the minimum of those two and we get the value of two. Here, it is equal to two. However, why is one to its left right here only holding one? Well, the max that's to its left is two. The max that's to its right is three. So those things are the same. The minimum of those two things is still two, except now this thing has a height of one. It's Itself. We have this height right here. This number here, this minimum, is the amount of potential water that we could store. Okay, we could potentially store at most two, except we actually need to take off the height that we have, because any height that we have is not going to add to the amount of water. Also, we might run into a situation here where the max to the left is two, the max to the right is either of these two, which is also two, we'll take the minimum, which is still two. So now we have the potential that we could store is two. So we have the potential is two, but we need to subtract off the height, which is actually three. We have three on the current height and we would get a negative number here, okay? So we don't actually want to add that in here. This is not going to give a negative water when the height's too high, we just want to add nothing. Now these two values on the outside, notice that they have zero water. They are always going to have zero water because we can treat the max wall at the left and the right to be zero. So at this point here, the max to the left is zero and therefore the minimum of those two values will be zero. That's going to give no water. We can't trap any water with zero. And same thing applies to the right. So for any given position, we just need to know the max that's to the left of it and to the right of it. Well, we can actually get both of these two things stored in an array. So here, if we get this array, we'll call left, basically the max left array. Now each item is going to be the max that we've seen to its left. Now the max that we've seen to its left is going to grow. It's going to start at zero because there's no wall to the left. So we'll keep track of this other value. We'll just call it max L. That is starting at zero. We're going to plug that in here because this has nothing to its left. Now when we go one over, we see a new height, but we see that after we plug this in, because at this position, the max that's to the left is still zero. But now we have to update this to be one, because at this point, we want this value over here to be this value. And then we see if we've seen a bigger max value. Here we haven't, so we'll keep this at one. We move one over here, we move over, and so we see a height of two, but we see that after plugging in this initial value of one, we then see an update, which is two, and we can iterate. So I'll just quickly plug this in. So the max that we saw here to the left is still two, it's still two, it's still two. At this stage, it's still two, but now we see a three. So this is going to be a three, and they'll all be threes from there on. This would be our max left array. Then we could do the exact same thing when building up a right array. We just iterate from the end going this way instead, as we'd basically have a max r equal to zero, and we do the same thing, but we're going to go left. Now I'm not going to show you the update of this value, but just to write this quickly, we start at zero, we saw a one, so this is going to be one, we just saw a two, so these are going to be twos up until we get to past the three, and so these are all going to be threes from here on, all going to be threes, and this would be our right array. 
Now from here, we want to calculate the sum of all the blue squares, which is eventually going to be six. Well, we start our sum at zero to begin with. Now this number here is the max that we saw to the left and the max that we saw to the right. As we saw, we want the minimum of those two things, which is going to be zero. That is the amount of potential water we can store in this position, that's just zero. We know if we subtract off our height, which is also zero, well, we're just going to be left with zero. So that won't add anything to our sum. This position is exactly the same thing, but when we get to over here, we get a minimum of one here. We can store potentially one water. We'd subtract off our height, which is zero. So we get one minus our height of zero, which is one. That's going to add one to our sum. And so that's going to be one for now. Then basically we would just continue iterating through this array. Whenever we get a positive number, we're going to add it to our sum. If we get zero or a negative number, we're just not going to change it at all. And that's the algorithm. Our initial max left wall, I'm just gonna call L wall, is equal to our L wall, which is zero. The max that we've seen to the left is initially zero and same at the right. As usual, we'll just get n is equal to the length of the height array. Then we have to get those arrays. So we have max left. This is going to be the max left array. This is equal to at the beginning. We're just going to initialize it to be n zeros. And same thing with max right. Max right is also equal to n many zeros. Now we can kind of go through the array forwards and backwards by just this simple trick here. We go forwards normally, you'll be used to this, for i in the range of n, that goes through the indices i 0 to n minus 1. But you can go backwards by just getting j is equal to negative i minus 1. Why is that? Well, at the beginning, negative i is going to be negative 0. So j is going to start at negative 1. In Python, negative 1 refers to the last index. And then from there, every time i increments, this is just going to decrement j here. So it'll go to negative 2, then negative 3. It basically says as i goes forwards, j is going to start at the end and go backwards. It'll work out perfectly. Now we want to immediately set the max left wall that we've seen at i, that is going to be immediately set to our value of left wall. It starts at zero, so that initializes the first position to be zero. And the same thing for the right, the max right at j, j is controlling the right spot, that is equal to immediately the value of the right wall. Then we need to possibly update the value of the left and right wall. We want to set left wall equal to the maximum of what we've seen so far, which is itself, but it could be higher by the current height, which is i. So we set left wall to be the maximum of itself and the current height, height at i. Then we do the analogous thing for the right wall. Our wall is equal to the max of our wall and the height at j. And that is actually going to build up our left and right wall array. Now we just need to iterate through the array one more time. So we'll get our sum is equal to zero at first, and we'll go for i in the range of n. So the amount of potential water we could store is the minimum of the max left at i and the max right at i. It is the minimum of the max that's to the left and the max that's to the right. Now we want to increment our sum only if the potential is positive. And I'm going to do that by just saying sum is going to go up by the max of zero and the potential minus the height at i. Okay, so if height at i is bigger than the potential, that's this case right here, the height is three, the potential would be two, because the minimum of those things is two, we'd actually get a negative one here. And so this value, this whole thing would be negative one. Well, this makes it so that the sum is only going to add zero, because zero is the max of zero and negative one, it's bigger. And therefore, when this value is negative, it's just going to add zero, which effectively does nothing. Then that is our answer. We just want to return the sum and that passes our test cases. Now the time complexity of this algorithm is going to be big O of n. Why is that? Well, we go through the array once with i and then we just do some stuff. We go through again. So we're basically just looping through a couple times. That is going to be big O of n. Now our space complexity, we are storing some pretty big things. We are storing our max left array and our max right array. And those are both of length n. So we basically have two arrays of length n. And so our space complexity is also going to be big O of n. Now there is actually a two pointer solution where you can avoid storing the max left and right arrays. And that would give an answer of constant space. I'm not going to show you how to do that. It's pretty complicated. I hope this was helpful, guys. Drop a like if it was, and I'll see you later.